Today we're going to be breaking down Hugh Jackman's original audition for Wolverine that led to him playing this part for 25 years. While his acting is great, he broke so many rules but still had a very strong audition. I'm Tristan Spohn, I'm an acting coach that you might know from Stranger Things or FBI or some of the small indie projects I've been a part of. Today we're going to go all the way back to 1999 to break down the original Wolverine audition. No, Professor will help you with that. So he said. Interesting. Immediately, he's doing such a good job of having that emotional accessing going on, which is something in body language where people tend to look down right as they're reliving parts of trauma. I'm sorry. For what? If I hurt you. It's what you see. I really wish that he would cheat his eyeline closer to camera, but also he's with Brian Singer. I recognize his voice. And so it's very rare you go direct to director meeting. It's usually like your third or fourth callback that you're meeting with the director, which shows he's already pretty high on their list. Most of the work he did before this were like bit parts on Australian shows. Like you really never know where all of your auditions are leading and who's watching the stuff that you're putting out there. You can see so much of that relationship history in his eyes that we can can still feel it through the screen despite him looking completely away from us. And realistically, if your director's in the room, especially in feature films, they make most of the major decisions, whereas TV shows, normally it's like your network executives. It's worth sacrificing connectedness to camera to like connect with that director. Um, oh she, yeah, she oh yeah, it. hey kid. Are you running again? You got any money? That was smooth. Because he clearly went up on his line, but he just he just rolled with it. A lot of actors would cut themselves and be like, oh, I'm so sorry, can I take it from the top? Whereas he's forgetting the line as the character, letting himself take that time before just continuing stride. You know, I woke up one day in a forest, in the middle of nowhere, and uh, I didn't know where these came from. He's definitely breaking the rules by constantly covering and touching his face because it's preventing him from being fully open to camera. But he's doing a great job of showing a time to break those rules because it's adding to how uncomfortable the character feels. Whereas 99% of the time actors cover their face are because the actor is uncomfortable. Just don't break the rules for the sake of breaking the rules. I always looked at this pal, I had his curse. Okay. Now when I first knew about it. I didn't think I'd be able to live with it. But I can't even show you the scars from all the times I've tried to kill myself, okay? Because they just disappear. When you touched me, when I was lying here, with no healing ability to apply, that was the closest to death I've ever been. This is cool. A lot of actors would be like, I tried to kill myself, but he's just letting it be very soft, very subtle. Get out. Yikes. Get out. Where am I supposed to go? I don't know. Get out. Okay. You don't know or you don't, don't care? care Pick one. Get out. He's also done such a great job in just these first couple of scenes of showing the arc of not only his character, but specifically the arc of his relationship to Rogue. We've seen him talk to her in such different ways in each of these scenes, which shows not just character growth, but relationship growth. So what's your name? Logan, what's yours? Rogue. What kind of a name is Rogue? He's doing a great job in this scene of making her earn the turn. Earning the turn is essentially where you don't just give all of your attention to everyone in the scene for free. You make it where they say something outrageous or specific or important enough to actually earn your look. Oh yeah, like the ball guy. My telepathy is no near as powerful as Professor Xavier's, but sometimes. <laughs> What is this cameraman doing? The main actor is just casually out of focus as he's so invested in the poster art behind him. You decided to keep everything seated. Like some of these I think would have benefited from the extra energy of standing 
and clearly the cameraman was free roaming so that he could match whatever he was doing. Because I personally would have found some scenes to bring extra energy to, to bring extra physicality to, that you just can't have when you're sitting. What happened to you? I don't remember. Try it again, but really not accessible here. I think, because I think. What, oh, okay, yeah. It, it, my, my feel is, just, I think when she starts drawing blood and talking about this, and she starts saying it's. He backs off. Like even even when, in a weird way, I think when he. She... One thing I tell all actors in my classes that I teach is, if I'm listening to it on mute, I should not be able to see a clear difference between when you're talking to the teacher versus when you're talking to your scene partner. And they break character, they break the scene. It's like Brian giving him notes. And it took me like a couple of seconds for me to realize, oh wait, the scene's done. They're, they're like breaking the scene to give feedback. That's how it should feel. It should feel that real. In the back, it looks like there's the poster art of the final scene where Wolverine is fighting Sabretooth, which is something you would never see nowadays just by how the industry has changed. So far, everything I've booked, Stranger Things FBI, was just off the one audition tape. They would never show you the final scene of the whole film. And he's just, and, and almost when, when he pops the claws on her, it's sort of like, is this where the... And he just kind of looks at her, and it's like... Oh, yeah. Okay. This is... Okay. You know? Don't go here. Did they, uh, that was not, cool. Uh, I would immediately cast him right off of this. As he's receiving the note, he's really letting himself get into that mindset. And I'm immediately seeing the darkness, the intensity of Wolverine appear in front of my eyes. And this is so impressive. The fact that this is his first audition with the director, and it feels like they're just collaborating on the scene to where in the audition, it almost feels like the exact dialogue you would have on set. It's just like, yeah, this is my version of the character. This is what I'm bringing. And you hear Brian Singer just building off of that instead of giving him everything, which goes to show a lot of times they're looking for the actor that can come in and just do it. They're not looking for someone they have to go spend hours fine tuning to get the performance they need you need to come ready to go, ready with your opinions. What's crazy is this one audition led to him playing this iconic character for 25 years. It wasn't anything crazy. It wasn't this huge high energy, having this big breakdown. He was relaxed and he was honoring the truth. I also played a hated mutant in Stranger Things 4. And if you wanna see a breakdown of how much I got paid for that, you can click this video right here.